Y'all have loved and supported the Secret Starting Class series from the get-go, but every now and then, people don't understand the point of it. Most of them don't make a 10-minute video, they just ask me to use weapons you get after fighting a Remembrance boss. Remember, the Secret Starting Class series is all about using weapons you can get before fighting a Remembrance boss. But for the people who want something new, uh, here's America Run in NG+. In NG+, anything can be a starting class, and I've always wanted to see what this hammer can do. To watch these runs live, follow me on Twitch. We find new ways to play Elden Ring all the time. Join the Patreon if you want to support the channel, it's the best place to do it since you also get exclusive videos. And make sure you like and subscribe, anyone can shatter the Elden Ring, but only a true Elden Lord could smash that mother trucking like button. All right, so I'll be real, I didn't really want to do two runs. Instead, I just went through the save files I already had cleared all Membies with and found one where I picked up the deathbed dress. If we didn't just randomly click the shiny thing in Limdale, we can't do it now because it's covered in ashes. Vike was the only one who had it, which is kind of funny because that means we have to canonically trans our gender with the Moon Mother. We'll have a much more hostile relationship with her in NG+, but for now, we have to play nice. Oh, and we can respec our stats to use the hammer more properly. Unfortunately, we did eat the Elden Remembrance, that means we've got to Turtles. and knock it down. With a second God's Hole in our hand, we can duplicate it for Marika's hammer. It's a hammer with a big ass shockwave Ash of War. Pretty cool. We can buy some stones from EG really quick, then show it off by smashing up the Albert Eriks and Mogwin Palace. Did you know that the Red Albert Eriks are the most killed enemy in the game, according to player data? Which is also funny, because they're only here after taking the portal in the Consecrated Snowfield while they were trying to get to the Halig Tree. Must have taken a wrong turn in Albernera Kirky. One last little errand, we didn't smash Alex as Vike since the Vike Ash of War is a pass of war. Now the Gold Breaker is a great Ash of War. It's a smash of war. Our old Ash was trash, so we passed, but the new Ash has a kick-ass smash, so the Jar has to get bashed. But first, we have to talk to him in a hot tub, then do an early swag jump to get over to his location in Faramazula. Hammers are pretty good at breaking ceramics, really the ideal tool. Now I've got Alexander's Jar Shard to deal 15% more damage every time we use the Gold Breaker. Marika likes a little danger. She'll get it falling for a stranger, a player. Time to get the credits on and start NG+. Some basics of NG+, Plus for those who don't know, bosses drop more runes, but also bigger hammers and have bigger health bars. Wait, sorry, that was metaphorical language. The health bar and the hammers are the same size, but they take more damage and deal more damage, respectively. We all understand that, right? I just want to make sure no one's feeling misled. They don't have that much more health and damage, though, at least not right away. So this grafted scion gets destroyed by the breaker. Then we breaker into Limgrave. You also start with a horse, which saves like 30 seconds as you run to the grace to talk to Melina. If you don't talk to Melina, you can't level up and take advantage of all those tasty new runes you're getting. Morgan has big holy resistance, it's what our hammer does, but we don't care. Time to admit a mistake. I used to think holy damage sucked. I was wrong. Holy damage is so good, it does not care if enemies have 80% resistance. But just for Ashes of War, the spells are terrible. Other than Dicks of Light, that's pretty good. Already time for the Danger Path and Godric, the biggest disappointment of our family line. This big ass Hammer Slammer is just smashing its way through the early game, which is kinda why we don't do this. Most of the time you hit NG+, you're gonna be very overleveled for the early game. Then the late game, everything hits harder. It's just not the way from soft builds challenge usually. When you fight Margaret at the beginning of the game, he has some moves. When you fight Morgoth later, he's got more moves that are harder to avoid, so you have to learn new strategies. They don't just turn up the damage or health like Skyrim. New Game Plus does that. It's not as good. Oh well, rant over. I was just riding an elevator to activate Godric's Great Room for plus five to every stat anyway. Forget Raya Lucaria, we do all of Lernia in about 10 minutes. Exit through Godric's back door and warp to the bridge. But wait just long enough so we don't die. Gotta remember to do that, otherwise you could embarrass yourself while speedrunning. Smorog is a nice place to test something. I know you can't jump over Radagon's hammer swings, so let's see if there's an aerial hitbox above the shockwave using Smarag's dumb dragon head. Is it possible this story is true? Yes, it is. Really just needed the key, but I'm happy to do some science when I can. Science rules. Renala kept the dog in the divorce, but if Radagon doesn't find out, it's fine that we beat his dog to death with a hammer. Two fingers take the wheel, we're being a little possessive. I also heard Moongrim can't parry the breaker. You're right. 
It's fact. Next up, it's our husband's ex-wife. Thanks for transing our gender earlier, but I saw you texting Radagon. We don't just share a phone plan. We share a phone because we're one person. Not totally sure how we're jealous, but hammer. It's a one cycle in phase one, and phase two, we just knock her into the air a bunch. Very fun. Other NG plus fact, you need to collect key items like the Dectus Medallion again. Annoying for me, but good for people who want to imagine Merica in Fortite. It's where we can take our first death doing a big breaker. I don't really care about death. It just looks so dang cool to do that big of a jump. Fort Faroth for the other piece, and we live the dive from this one? Uh, oh. Okay. Then just stop by the Millicent Church on the way down to Caleb. The impassable Great Bridge is very easy to pass. Oh wait, they're shooting at me. Oh yeah, we haven't gone to Altus yet. Oh well, it just adds another boss in the party room and a little run through Redmain Castle. Could be faster, but I don't really know the layout here. Who the hell explores Redmain Castle? If you don't want the Flamburger, there is nothing here worth wasting your time for. Even the Red Hot Wet Blade doesn't show up until after Radon is dead for some reason. Misbegotten and Crucible Knight. I got news from the Erd Tree. We are not doing the Crucible anymore. Get hit with the Layoff hammer. I know it's disappointing, but don't kill the messenger. Because in Soviet Kalid, messenger kills you. Any Yagov Smirnov fans in the chat? Smash that like button if you're a Yagov Smirnov fan. Wait, we still have to go to Altus to start the party anyway. I guess we have a big greatsword now that we won't use. Uh, neat. Hi, Altus. By Altus, Stepson Radon next. Summon everyone so we can gang up and hammer him. Google Stepmom hammers Stepson on your work computer to find out more. We're just spamming Gold Breaker over and over again. The distance it closes is great. It gives you super armor as long as you don't get grabbed. And if you have the Ritual Shield Talisman, you can just tank hits in the air before bringing it down. It's a one cycle. Y'all see what I mean when I say early game is too easy? And Radon is like, not even early game? Oh well, time to go into Radon's hole. Google Stepmom opens up Stepson's hole in your work computer and light some torches. All of that took a little less than an hour. We just had some extra time to stream one day. The real work begins next time. Moose is weak to holy. It just takes one, two, three, four, five hits. Then we pop into the night's sacred ground, but with very cool breaker jumps. Pick up our husband from a chest. There's a theory out there that Radagon was Merica's mimic. It's not totally clear how they're the same person, but also like not. Probably not going to use him though. Carry a manor next. Skip all the graces. That won't come back to bite us later. Loretta takes one, two, three, four hits. She's not even weak to holy. I guess she just has less health than the moose. Hi, Ronnie. Thanks for the video idea. Talk more soon. Okay, bye, bestie. Now we can actually open the chest. The game literally stops you from opening the chest if you don't talk to Ronnie. Like, did she patch you through on the ring camera or something? Valiant Gargoyles next. Smash the first one up with around five hits, but it's a little slow since it keeps moving. We do have to deal with two of them at the same time for a little bit. Annoying. Especially with the poison floor. God, I hate that move. That opens up the pass to the deep root depths, and we can squish some ants with a hammer on the way down for free rune arts. Time for our first hard boss, Fia's Champs. Wait, really? That's not right, it should be free. The gold breaker is betraying us. The wind up is slow, and since the animation isn't canceled when you're hit, we just air stall until we get stabbed to death by Lionel. Easy fix, get some wolves. The wolves were probably Merica's. They're not upgraded, literally level zero wolves in the middle of NG+, but their whole job is distracting some champs for a few seconds. Works like a charm. Hammer down, first wall scaled. Little embarrassing the first wall was Fia's champs, but I won't tell if you won't. Wow, it's so nice to be back home in the royal capital. So much for a warm welcome though we're getting attacked by an erd tree avatar rude then morgoth summons the ghost of our ex-husband is he trying to parent trap us back together parent trap would be a very different movie if the parents attacked each other with axes and hammers i'm not gonna say a worse movie just a different movie i would like to see it a Black Knife Assassin comes after us next, probably one of the ones who killed our favorite son. Godwin was such a nice boy. How dare you show your face here? Merica loves all of her kids equally. I don't care for- Morgoth. He's just such a needless contrarian, you know? Morgoth, stop dodging. I'm trying to hit you. Why can't you just do what mommy says for once? We ask you to stay in the sewer. You don't want to. We ask you to get hit by a hammer. You don't want to. Just kind of a baby in their no phase, you know? For Biden lands next. Way to shit the bed, Joe. I give you credit for one week and you immediately start building a wall and say, whoopsie doopsie, my hands were tied. Embarrassing. Mountaintops of the Giants are a great place to burn down the Erd Tree and I think America does want that. Like she's kind of trapped by the greater will. Maybe it'll be clear 
when we get a Merica boss fight in the DLC. Fire Giant Time. Some say Merica went too far killing all the giants with the Golden Order. I think Merica didn't go far enough. We're not using Breaker on the leg. The Fire Giant is too likely to roll away. We're just gonna use big old charged attacks until he sits still for a bit. Phase two, I know that hand isn't going anywhere, and I also know hammers are super effective against fingers. I've seen the Three Stooges build a house. We also poke him in the eye. Gotta love these topical Three Stooges references. It's pretty free. Actually, totally free, since we didn't take a single hit. Enough hammer fingers. Let's hammer the castle's hole, and oof, three on one? Could be an issue. Except, remember how Radigan destroys your spirit ashes with his huge hammer hitboxes? Now we have the huge hitboxes, and our enemies have the spirit ashes. Just a little trading with the ritual shield talisman, and we're one on one with Nile, who we can also trade with. Trading is cool. It gives you exclusive Pokemon. Get both pieces of the Howling Tree, and we're off to the Consecrated Snowfield. I was a bit worried that the Penguin Noble would bleed us while the hammer winds up, but he never does. On to Mogwin. Yeah, this goes bad, not the path through Mogwin. That's fine. I could do that in my sleep. I give me weird dreams, but I could do it. The issue is Moog, who is one of those big bosses in the game. I put him in a category with Radagon, Melania, and Placidious Axe. The category is bosses boosted by gods that aren't Fire Giant, because Fire Giant's not that hard. Normally, Moog isn't that big of a deal, but since we're basically naked in NG+, blood is a problem. It gets our socks wet, so the Ritual Shield doesn't work if we're not at 100%. 99 is not enough. We also don't have the Moog tier the first few times, so let's go get that. Hey, Eleonora. Reach for the sky back at it, now we don't have to waste a bunch of flasks and can keep stance pressure up while Moog is in the healing. I don't really know how much stance pressure he can take here. I think it's a reduced amount. Maybe just has super armor until he's done and takes the whole amount of stance damage. What am I, a data miner? If anything, I'm a data adult. Thank you, I vote. I just want to clarify, Moog is not in trouble for kidnapping his brother to play wedding. Obviously that's bad. He's in trouble because he left all his red Legos on the ground and mommy keeps stepping on them when she's just trying to walk to the fucking bathroom at night. A few more tries and we get it. Now we've punished almost all of our kids. Who's next? For Amazula time, we do the giant gold breaker jump because gravity is weird here and sometimes it just doesn't deal damage. I'll take it. We summon Bernie for the Godskins and fun fact, Bernal was originally in contention to be the avatar of the Golden Order. He dropped out relatively early, did a bunch of touring to support Merica, but six years later, Merica is still giving interviews pissed off that he had the audacity to run against her. And somehow blaming him for the Night of Black Knives? It's not his fault you didn't campaign in the Weeping Peninsula. Anyway, I aim for the chunky. Bernie takes on the skinny. I've gotten a lot more comfortable with the big one than the skinny one. It's funny how things change. I know a lot of you have been waiting for me to address something in the video, and um, this is uncomfortable, but here it is. You cannot gold breaker the swag jump. I'm so sorry to disappoint you. We also fall off during the bird run, which means we have to do it again, but the aerial hitbox of the breaker also breaks the birds. We haven't fought the tree sentinel in a while since I've taken to going through the deep root depths. Turns out, stance break in two hits, and then we can charge up one of the breakers while it's done. Pretty free. Time to fight a dog with a hammer. We set a nerd tree on fire, we're aggressive towards animals. If we wet the bed, we can get free McDonald's. That joke is a bit of a deep cut, kind of like the deep cut Malekith gives us in phase two. We were actually doing okay until destined death just melts our health. Jeepers creepers. Attempt two, we are struggling a little bit, but not as much as you might think. 80% holy resistance should be throttling us, but apparently this hammer has quite a bit of strike damage as well. It does scale more with strength than faith, and you can't two-hand boost the faith. Golden Order probably doesn't even want you one-hand boosting your hammer. We head into phase two with the pressure of one gold breaker, but get caught in the front flip. It doesn't hit us with the AoE, but we don't get to punish. Bit disappointing. He really loves jumping around today, though. But if we know where he's gonna land, we can jump and break. That's a dead dog. Gideon is free. The only thing he manages to do is activate his hammer's weapon art, which lowers his holy resistance. It also lowers our holy resistance, but hey, Gideon, you don't get to do any holy damage today, okay? Godfrey is a little rougher. I'm not sure if the stance pressure is raised more the further you go into the game. I noticed it a bit with Malakath, but I'm really feeling it here with Godfrey. Phase two, I wonder if he can grab us out of the gold breaker. Yes. I just quit out. Godfrey isn't going to be getting in our guts anymore with the grab with the grab attack. Sometimes we didn't quit out and we just died. We were regularly getting a stance break right before phase two. So the winning run, we switch to R1s before we get to phase two and give him a little bit of space. That's probably healthy for a breakup. Finally, get the break in phase two. And after that, I know he's going to do the shockwave. Should be able to hit him with the breaker here. It's kind of nice reconnecting with Godfrey. There's just comfortable patterns we can fall into. I don't think we're getting back together though. It would never work out. His face is a little too hammer smashed for my taste. Now, Radagon, that's a guy Merica could get behind. Don't you mean a guy who could get behind Merica? Not this time. 
Strap in, this is gonna be a tough one. Radagon and the Elden Beast both have 80% holy resistance and he is super aggressive. I've gotten better at avoiding the Hammer Slammer, but God dang it, he put the net holy AOE thing right where I need to be to dodge, oof. Next run, we start off greedy as hell, just diving in with two breakers right away. We have 20 seconds with the stance damage boosting Physic tier to put as much pressure on as possible. Oh, we got that back in the Vike run, by the way. First stance break brings him to about half his health. Then we can punish his gold breaker with some charge attacks so that when it comes time for the hammer slammer just takes one hit to knock him down onto the elden beast we just have to hit it as hard as possible to stop it from moving not all that worried about it killing us i'm just worried about it taking a lot of time final boss is dead but even though it was our boss and it's the final boss it's not the last boss does that make sense it's time for more breaking these are the breaks For some reason, I thought we already talked to Raya, but nope. Turns out hammers are a great tool for opening up crab claws. Boggart has said some very uncouth things about Merica. I don't like it. Now we can hit up the Volcano Manor, open the shortcut, and beat up the Godskin Noble. We already beat up two of these, shouldn't be too bad. It almost gets too bad, but it didn't. And close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. Love hand grenades. The best memories from my childhood are pulling a pin and almost blowing up the house. Everyone remembers that part of Merica lore where she just grabs the Serpent Hunter. Okay, cool. Glad we all agree. If Rikard gets to use the Earthquake, you can't dodge three times. I get to use the Serpent Hunter. This fight sucks. Speaking of fights that suck, Placidious Axe. New game Placidious Axe has way too much health. New game plus the Sax has way too much health. First try goes bad. We're just doing some science to see how often we can break, whether or not we should do something else. It's a successful text run. Next attempt, we get the stance break early and slowly bait him over to the corner during the teleport phase. Omega laser blasts, we get another break and just beat him down for free. If the best way to fight a boss is to avoid fighting it, that's a bad boss. It's the incel river main. We just skip the doll of Ronnie. That's pretty sad to fall in love with a doll instead of just talking to a real person. Oh well, lake of rot. And then a stell time. Lots of stall moves again. I don't know what the deal is. We had a solid two months where I didn't see the bongos or the grab you can't punish. Now every time I fight it, it's doing bongos and grabbing. RNG is a real humdinger. Now I have to do four to sacks and uh, oh God, I have to do so many errands for Ronnie. It's gonna take like 10 10 minutes of in-game time. If only I had something to talk about for 10 minutes. It's time for the moment you've been waiting for. For those unaware, this whole video is kind of a response to a video made by a fellow Elden Ring creator, Only Waifu. He makes videos about PvP, and in the video he uses he pronouns for himself, so that's where we're going with here. Waifu's video is 10 minutes of calling the Secret Starting Class series clickbait, which I've never had anyone make a video where they're just mad at me for 10 minutes and didn't totally know how to respond to it, so uh, I guess it's this. Now, before we start that response, though, remember, it is not your job to go into the comments and pick fights. Don't do that. That is weak sauce. Just ignore it or say something nice. Let's start with the premise. Clickbait is bad because it wastes viewers' time. There's nothing really else bad about it. You just clicked on a video you didn't want to watch and ended up stuck there. So if you hate wasting viewers' time, uh, 10 minutes is too long for this video. You gotta improve your splits. Here, I'll do it for you. Tulak and Mango's secret starting class videos are clickbait because they say you can be a starting class, but they pick a different starting class at the beginning of the game, and then you have to go get other stuff. I don't like that, and they should feel bad. That's around eight seconds. In a real job, you'll have scenarios where this meeting could have been an email, but in YouTube, you have this drama video could have been a short. You should have read the fine print, my friend. Oh, sorry, video essay. At least I know what I'm gonna be for Halloween. I'll be Bucky Barnes, since this is Cap. We're gonna trim the video down by cutting the fat. First, we're gonna cut out all the parts that are just clips of our videos, which are usually followed by JonTron clips in the year of our Lord 2023. That one didn't age quite so well. Moving right along, that takes the video from 10.30 to 7.40, much more manageable. We can cut another 57 seconds because there's the section about the Bloodhound Step joke in the Bloodhound Night video. For some reason, they nerfed the Bloodhound Step, though. Oh, yes. I surely do wonder why they nerfed Bloodhound Step. Which, uh, he just didn't register as a joke. Ends that one with a content cop clip. Shots fired, shots fired. I'm taking cover. It might be an ironic statement from him, but you know what? I don't care. Shots fired at who? At yourself? Don't high five yourself after a joke. It was ironic. It was a joke. A quick one, maybe not a good one, but this is almost 10% of your runtime, dude. 646 now. A quick 10 seconds where he says that the videos are guides. It's basically a guide, if you can call it that. Something that we've 
never said in any of the videos or in any of the descriptions of the videos or in any of the titles of the videos. We don't even put that in the tag. I can't hate Fast and Furious because it didn't teach me how to drift. I'd have to be willingly ignorant to do that. Pick that up for another 23 seconds because there's one comment with no likes that is also confused by our guide. Oh, hey, let's talk about comment polls. He pulls comments from the Bloodhound Knight video to show how loads of comments were upset by the clickbait, but there's a total of six comments and fun fact, everybody, comments can be upvoted. There is a collective two likes on the six comments that he pulls. If you actually go to the Bloodhound Knight video, you have to scroll through about 60 comments before you find anyone who's upset about the title. And a lot of the comments that you're passing like the video and are excited for the new series or are giving suggestions for the next episode of the series. If you don't like it when people are manipulative, this seems pretty manipulative to me. Like I could cherry pick several comments from your video specifically about how our videos are clickbait, disagreeing with you and saying that they're not clickbait. And those comments have likes. We're at the Lions game. The Lions? Like the animal from the circus? I, well, they were playing a game. I was talking about the football team. Yeah, everyone knows what he's talking about. My mistake. There's an implication that we clickbaited everyone, and since the video was successful, we did it again out of sinister intent. So our friend Tulok, observing the success of his clickbaity masterpiece, did it again. No. People just liked the video? It's our job to make videos that people like. So when we had a video people liked, we made another one. And no scary music or sound effects, just like, yeah, we made another one. The rest of the video is sort of just repeating the same point over and over again. The title says Secret Starting Class and there's no literal Bloodhound Knight starting class. So let's address that. Why did we call the video that? Were we trying to clickbait people? Uh, no. We also weren't making a joke like some people think. It's just a name for a series, like the King of Queens. Kevin James is not a monarch and it would be silly to think that. It's just a catchy name because the show takes place in Queens. Secret starting class, three words long, it's alliterative, and it's descriptive. If the series was called Build You Can Make With A Weapon That You Can Get Before Fighting or A Remembrance Boss, the thumbnail would be bad. We're not making a Fall Out Boy song, we can't name things that. A series is a good thing for a YouTube channel to have. It gets people coming back who liked the previous episode, and it's very bingeable for new people who find your content. Waifu spends a little bit of the video just getting mad about monostat runs that we did, and like maybe he just hates series. Like maybe he just hates the concept of a series. Like he watches a second episode of King of Queens and is like, this is the same guy. Uh, these creators are lazy. Secret Starting Class also kind of started because of the monostat runs and the starting gear runs. We were four videos into the monostat runs when Gino started doing monostat runs, and we were two videos into the starting class runs when Bushy did all of the starting classes in one video. Which is which is fine, by the way. I like both Gino and Bushy's content. I don't think they stole the idea from me. If they did get the idea from watching my videos, I kind of don't care. There's only a limited amount of things we can do in Elden Ring as creators. Eventually, there's going to be some overlap. For an example of how desperate we Elden Ring creators are while waiting for the DLC, uh, check out this video from Only Waifu. But basically, if Gino and Bushy are doing videos and I am substantially worse at the game than them, my videos underneath them are just like, hey, do you want to see me do that? But like worse? That's not going to be very good. So for a while, I wanted to do a series using gear that you can get before a Remembrance boss. That way you could basically play the whole game with it. It might sound familiar. And the name was taken from, get ready for this, it's super secret. Eldritch clickbait knowledge, um, secret menus from like McDonald's or Starbucks. For those who don't know, secret item menus are not on the menu at the fast food place you go to. They're things you can order, do a little work yourself, and then get a unique food. Like the McGangbang from McDonald's. It's a McDouble and a McChicken that you put together. If you order a McGangbang from McDonald's, the cashier won't know what you're talking about. And if the cashier does know what you're talking about, they won't have a button on the register they can press for McGangbang. You're gonna get charged for a McDouble and a McChicken. That doesn't mean that secret menus or the McGangbang is a lie. It's just just a name for a thing, like the King of Queens. So for those curious, it wasn't clickbait, it wasn't a joke, it was just like a name. So why didn't we explain this in the first episode? Well, Waifu actually has a great answer for that. I refuse to believe anyone is slow enough to actually think this is a starting class. Yeah, you'd have to be like a child for that. These videos are about an M-rated game. I make jokes about cum shots and dragon dildos 
all the time. It's not for kids. Dude, You'd have to be willfully ignorant to assume this is a video about some sort of hack or cheat code. I, I don't know, what, what, what is it that he thinks this is? So let's take it back to the thesis. Clickbait is bad because it wastes time. And then we'll also add in gets you views from a manipulative source. That's kind of not really true though. The YouTube algorithm is kind of nebulous and hard to follow, but two things are clear. Uh, YouTube doesn't register a view until you've watched 30 seconds of a video and YouTube favors videos that have better watch time. The longer someone watches the video, the more likely YouTube is to recommend it. It's why you would hypothetically stretch, I don't know, a one minute premise into a 10 minute video, hypothetically. But I'm not here to dunk on waifu, at least not right now. I already mentioned how a minute 30 of the video is just clips from our intros where we explain what the video will be about. That takes less than 15 seconds in every video, leaving viewers 15 seconds to say, eh, this isn't for me and click off to find something else. And it wouldn't register a view until they crossed 30 seconds. Sorry, I forgot waifu is a PVP content creator, 900 frames. Even I can hit that parry window. That's kind of what we want. Trying to get someone to click on a video you don't think that they would actually like would be a terrible way to grow your channel. It also would not get your video popping off. I got really frustrated because waifu just keeps putting it in the video over and over, different examples of us telling people what the video is so they're not misled and then says we're trying to justify the clickbait. No, that's not, it's not a trick if the magician tells you where the rabbit is in the hat. It's just like a guy carrying a rabbit. Now, hypothetically, if we made a 10 minute video calling out another creator, calling them a liar, only to apologize at the end, then go into the replies that disagreed with us and say, oh, if you watched all 10 minutes, you'd realize that in the first nine and a half, I didn't mean what I was saying. I'd maybe consider that a little bit manipulative, especially if you could have done it faster. Remember though, no hate to waifu in his comment section or anywhere else. Just be chill. He can make a drama video if he wants. It's no big deal. It's probably good for our channel. The best thing that could happen is if that video blows up and sends people over to watch our video. We actually have a pretty good viewer retention rate. People like our videos. Basically, this is just a hotel pool. It's not that deep, and if you dive in, you're gonna hurt your fucking head. Uh, thanks for the America idea, though. I am gonna stick with the kayfabe. It's a wrestling term for when the wrestlers pretend to hate each other, so... Uh, hey, look at that. We can fight Fortisax now. Bye! If you remember all the way back against Smarag, we can hit the dragon head with a shockwave. Sometimes. Sometimes Fortisax wants to stand up on their hind legs and it's so cute. They think there are people. Oh, they died. No issues in the liturgical town or the halig tree. Killing the snail makes the crystallion die too, but sometimes slowing down to kill the snail just gives the crystallion time to kill you. It's a gamble either way. This time it pays off big. Loretta is super similar to the tree sentinel we fought earlier. Really fast stance breaks, followed by more stance breaks. Since the stance breaks, let us line up the gold break. The clean Rot Knight actually ends up killing us on the way into LFL, not Loretta. But the Rotter Fall is the one thing in NG Plus that's better. Because you can run. Hold circle through the Rotter Fall actually works. God bless America. But you know who will probably be worse in NG Plus? Our daughter. Or should I say our Rotter? Rot Ro Raggy. Technically, Goldbreaker does launch Melania. It's just so slow that she'll start one of her many, many hyper armor moves and attacks and then just power through it. First hit is fine since she hasn't taken any damage to heal up, but follow-ups, the trade is less profitable, especially since she has more health. So that 1% of healing she gets is worse than NG+. Wahoo! Do you like her ducky dance? Why? We can dodge it sometimes, but if you use the wrong move to draw her aggro with it, you can't get away from it. Like the jump attack. There's too many dead frames on the ending, so we can't circle around her on the back or run away from her. Congrats if you're a big strong boy who didn't even think Melania is hard, but like, who is hard to you then? Are you Goku? No, Goku's nice. We do find a bit of a rhythm, just gotta get in and get out, but it's not really clicking. Might just have to find a little distraction. Time for co-parenting. Let's destroy Phalanx Demon's Souls. Oh shit, I'm so sorry. This is not actually the boss Phalanx from Demon's Souls. It's just something that looks like the boss Phalanx from Demon's Souls, so I call it Phalanx. Phalanx Demon's Holes. Just want to make sure nobody at home is confused about that or scared or frightened that they don't know what's going on. I suggest you don't worry about this sort of thing and just enjoy yourself. That goes for you all too. Yes. 
Mimic is maxed out now, and Radagon and Merica can be the same person while being different people and hammer together. So Radagon is helpful a little bit, just basically bashing enough to distract and keep the pressure up. Stance breaking Melania is one of the best ways to handle her. Oh, but hey, she has more stance resistance and the previously mentioned super armor attacks, which are activated by the gold breaker. The best thing we can do against her, kind of. Figure out we just need to save the mimic for phase two. Love that you can't send Melania to phase two with a crit. Again, you can say Melania isn't the hardest boss if you want. She just has, you know, more super armor attacks than any boss, heals on hits, has a bunch of combo moves, deals more damage than any other boss, can dodge better than any other boss, has a glitch where you can't crit to push her into phase two, Starts phase two with a move that you can't approach her during to reset her stance pressure, unlike every other phase two boss, as rotten phase two can fly and uses multiple moves that you straight up cannot hit her with with a melee weapon, and one of the hardest to dodge moves in the game in both phases that's a combo to get around the ritual shield talisman, unlike Rikard's Earthquake or Placidus Axe's Omega Laser. Other than all that, yeah, she's no harder than the rest of the bosses in the game. Just, you know, those things. I'm not saying she's impossible, it just takes a lot more patience than any other boss. We always lead off with a gold breaker, the trade is worth it. After she's down about 25% though, we can no longer jump attack or break her. Those are our best options for closing a gap or keeping pressure up, but if we do it and she chooses to ducky dance, we die. Just one hit in and run. Eventually we will get a stance break. As she stands up, we can hit a free fully charged charged attack, then roll back. Light roll gets us far enough away that we can sprint back if she decides to ducky dance. We're into phase two with the pressure of a full charge attack that pretty much gets reset by the big onion at least it gives us enough time to bring radigan out and then we pop in with a gold breaker and send her to the sky if you time it right you can punish the onion with a big gold breaker that sends her into the sky but the window is pretty tight ducky dance starts which is bad we'll die since we used gold breaker to get in there until radigan distracts her so we get to live one gold breaker isn't enough to handle her but two at the same time now that's some pa -pa -pa power until the whirlwind just destroys the mimic again that thing is dolm is bricks, we did not marry him for his mind. We married him for the convenience of a shared dental plan. She's hanging out at like 30% for so long. Uh, where's your onion? There it is. And we follow up with a few breaks by timing it right to get a combo. Super close to a win, but she starts the ducky dance. And I greed in. I don't care. I'm getting that win. That's 27 bosses in five hours and 39 minutes of in-game time with 37 deaths. Technically, all these bosses were harder than the other runs we've done. So C tier below our second Wolverine run, not bad. The gold breakers, pretty great. This would be better with bigger armor since the super poise makes sure you get the damage off, but it does not make sure you stay alive as you're swinging. Overall, I just really don't like New Game Plus. If you want to start a series of videos where you do NG Plus runs using later game gear, sounds like a cool idea. Just make sure the title is literal or you'll be the subject of an extended drama video. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, subscribe for more. We're making new Elden Ring videos all the time. Join the Patreon if you want to support the channel and check us out on Twitch if you want to watch these runs live.